Sydney ranks among the top travel destinations worldwide, and for good reason. Attractions like Bondi Beach, the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge are iconic sites that draw crowds from around the globe. However, for residents or anyone needing to navigate the central business district, the situation is far from perfect. In fact, driving in the city can be quite a headache, which is why a new highway is currently being constructed beneath the harbour to get rid of all the traffic. As of late 2022, this project has taken an unexpected turn. Changes have been made to the original plans after construction had already begun. A significant decision in the realm of major infrastructure projects. This explains why a multi-billion dollar road tunnel project has drastically changed course. Visitors to Sydney can expect sunshine, beaches and, unfortunately, traffic. Sydney's traffic woes are more severe than in many other cities. This is partly due to high car ownership and limited public transport options. There are few road routes for crossing the harbour. The Harbour Bridge alone sees over 200,000 trips daily. Besides the bridge, the other main routes are the Harbour Tunnel, which runs parallel to the bridge underground, and the Anzac Bridge to the west. These limited options often lead to bottlenecks and, during incidents, finding a detour can be nearly impossible. A new crossing is now being constructed to help ease these issues, marking yet another massive construction effort across this significant waterway. The $3.2 billion project, known as the Western Harbour Tunnel, introduces a new tunnel beneath Sydney Harbour, this time further west. This route will serve as a vital new bypass for the CBD. The New South Wales government anticipates that this addition will reduce traffic by 35% on the Western Distributor Highway, 20% on the original Harbour Tunnel, and 17% on the Harbour Bridge. Spanning approximately 6.5 kilometres, the tunnel's construction is divided into two phases. Work on Stage 1 began in mid-2022, utilising advanced road header tunnelling machines. While the tunnel's name might be straightforward, the construction techniques used for its central section are very interesting. The section beneath the water will feature an immersed tube method, similar to that used in the early 90s for the original harbour tunnel. This process involves dredging a large trench in the harbour bed, placing prefabricated tunnel segments into it, massive temporary construction sites have been established at both ends of the crossing to facilitate these operations. These sites handle various tasks, from producing tunnel segments to building cofferdams and managing material disposal. The cofferdams create a dry work environment within a water body, important for linking the submerged tunnel sections to the mainland. The immersed tube tunnel technique was also used in the Fehrmann Belt fixed link between Denmark and Germany. Despite the project's advantages, the new Sydney tunnel has sparked controversy, particularly regarding its environmental impacts. There were concerns that dredging for the tunnel could release a mix of harmful chemicals into the harbour. Also, the temporary construction sites were expected to cause significant disruptions and the project was predicted to generate considerable noise, dust and even potential damage to nearby properties. As the concerns mounted, urgent action was necessary. The initial plan to use an immersed tube method has been eliminated. Yes, one of Australia's largest construction efforts, which had already commenced, has shifted gears. The section previously planned as an immersed tube tunnel will now be excavated using two exceptionally large tunnel boring machines, or TBMs. While it might seem like the most intriguing aspect of the project was removed, these aren't your ordinary TBMs. Designed to carve out a six-lane highway, three lanes in each direction, these TBMs boast an impressive diameter of 16 metres. To put that in perspective, they are substantially larger than those used for the Sydney Metro and are similar in size to the ones employed in Melbourne's Westgate Tunnel project. These massive TBMs will arrive by boat in large sections and will be assembled at a launch cavern from where they will start their journey beneath the harbour.
Although this method sounds simpler than the original plan, it presents its own set of challenges. The TBMs will need to tunnel deeper than the planned immersed tube and will face difficult ground conditions. The chosen method originally was due to the area's poor geology, which complicates deep tunneling. That's why Aconia, the contractor for this phase, will use a specialized mixed shield TBM. This technology features an air cushion just behind the cutting head, helping to manage and stabilize pressure at the front of the machine as it advances. This is particularly useful for digging large tunnels in areas with varied soil materials and high water pressure, like those found under Sydney Harbour. So, why the switch to a TBM approach for the Western Harbour Tunnel? According to one government minister, it's the best outcome for the local economy and the environment. This method eliminates the need for dredging, and two of the planned construction sites are no longer necessary. This change is also expected to reduce costs. However, this solution doesn't address all the initial concerns. Residents still report disturbances from the noise of the large drilling machines, particularly during the night as they are transported in and out. The disruption from the already completed work on Stage 1 remains a point of contention. Furthermore, not everyone is pleased with the introduction of another toll road in Sydney, a city where driving costs are already high. One Member of Parliament has argued that the tunnel could encourage more car use and have minimal impact on reducing traffic congestion. Major construction on Stage 2 began in late 2023, after further consultations with local communities. The project's completion has also been pushed back, now expected in 2028 instead of the originally planned 2025 to 2026. This delay is a typical consequence of such significant changes to the project's scope and methods. The Western Harbour Tunnel is a classic example of the challenges and trade-offs involved in large infrastructure projects. While it has the potential to significantly ease Sydney's traffic woes, it comes with high costs, considerable disruption and a lengthy completion timeline. Yet this project also shows that plans can be changed significantly if the reasons are compelling enough, a rarity in large-scale public works. As the project moves forward under intense scrutiny and with bold adjustments, Sydney's residents are hopeful that these efforts will ultimately be worthwhile. That's all we have for you today at Ultimate Mega Builds. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more amazing Mega Build videos. We'll be back soon.